Hey guys, welcome back to Range of Survival and Fieldcraft. I'm Andrew. I've had a lot of comments, feedback, conversations about bug out bags and where to start when building a bug out bag. So this video is for family and friends and everybody in the survival community and the audience watching that needs to understand the foundational principles and priorities for building a bug out bag given the heightened level of threat that we face nowadays in the geopolitical stage. So this video is for you. Stick around, watch, understand the basic principles, and then you can begin to tailor your bag for your environment based off your own situation. Stand by. So we need to have a bag ready to go for us, and there are a few things we can do to organize this bag and make it suitable for us. We're gonna go down the seven priorities of survival, that being fire, water, food, shelter, land navigation, medical aid, and signaling. Those are the seven things that we absolutely must have in order to survive. And some are gonna be more important than others. But first, let's take a look at our bag. Our bag needs to be some sort of monotone bag. 25 to 30 liters is perfect. If we have children, we can make this bag smaller. If we wanna carry more gear, we can make this bag bigger. It's all dependent on our situation and what we want to carry. Now, one comment I've had recently is about cutting off the 511 tag on this 511 Covert backpack. So we can get rid of that tag to make this less likely to be noticed, especially by people that might know 511, signaling that this is a tactical bag, or we may have weapons or certain valuables on us. So just a monotone bag that could be transitioned from an urban setting into a forest setting, but large enough to contain our gear that doesn't throw off signals that we are a threat or have valuables on our person. Next, let's talk about water. Water is obviously still going to be very important, especially if we transition in a bug out situation from an urban setting to a rural setting or vice versa. We still need water because we can only go three days without water. First thing is a water container. That's a camelback. 100 ounce camelback is great. We can have smaller ones for children if you need to. Notice a Sawyer mini filter that is in line. They come with attachments where we have a blue cap and a gray cap, meaning gray for dirty water, blue for clean water. And we just cut the hose, attach these attachments to our inline filter, and then connect the hoses. And now we have a filter that we can use. We can put dirty water in our camelback, go through the filter, drink clean water coming out the blue end to the mouthpiece, and we have clean water. So we don't have to worry about actually cleaning this out. We can fill up from any source because we have that filter right there. Another good container is just a simple Nalgene bottle with a nesting cup. Notice we put 100 mile an hour tape or duct tape around the bottle to contain or at least have a friction hold on that metal cup. Very easy to do. That metal cup gives us the ability to boil water over a fire. It's a good nesting cup. Plus we can add a paracord lanyard here. We can use this to actually lower the bottle with another piece of paracord into a water source that we can't get to or climb down to. We just leave the mouth of the bottle open. We can scoop up that water and then pull it back up or we can use this lanyard to attach to our bag and carry it that way if we choose. But a nesting cup, along with that duct tape for improvisation, anything we need duct tape for, and a lanyard, 32 ounce container, good to go. Now, that 32 ounce container is great because most chemical means of treatment for water are going to be measured out in 32 ounces or one US quart or one liter increments. So we can use this bottle as well with iodine tablets or water purification tablets. You can take these tablets and use them, treat water inside of this quart container, making it safe to drink. One other thing we should also have as part of our water kit is a silk cock key. This key is used for the exterior of buildings that have water sources or hoses that typically go into the side of the building. We can use this, unhook that hose, use this key to turn on that water, and then fill up our water sources. Great for an urban setting. And so here, it's just a basic idea of a water kit that we can use. Another quick idea that I think is great is that we have a GeoPress filter, like the Grail right here. Great item because it is a very fast filter. All we have to do is unscrew the cap, take out, the inner filter, fill up this cup, the exterior of the entire system with water up to that line right there. And then we just simply take the filter itself, place it down on top of the water, push down for approximately 15 seconds until that filter is completely in the actual container itself, cap it off, and we have fresh clean water to drink in about 15 seconds from any source that we wanna gather water from because that GeoPress is still a great filter. On top of that, at Self-Reliance Outfitters, the Pathfinder School, at the store, they have 
nesting cups, a metal nesting cup that fits right on this grail, similar to our Nalgene right here. And now we have a way to boil water over a fire. We can use this as a pre-filter or we can filter this. And if we're not convinced that it's safe, we can put it in this cup over a fire. Once we start a fire, boil it and make it 100% safe to drink. The grail comes with smaller types of grails, small and large for different size kits, good for kids, great for adults, and you have good filters right here, another one with the nesting cup, giving us multiple options to treat water in a bug out situation. All right, so we talked water, water kits, a lot of good things out there we can pack for a bug out bag for treating water in any situation. Now let's talk shelter. For shelter, what we need, something to sleep on, something to sleep in and something to sleep under. We need those three things minimum to maintain core body temperature and thermal regulation in any survival situation. Now, what we have here is just a simple air mattress. We can blow this up and then simply deflate it. Very easy, packable, lightweight sleeping mattress for us to use. Next, we just have a lightweight bivy, 100% waterproof. And this is incredibly hot, especially with our other shelter items. Being 100% waterproof, it's not very breathable, which will contain a lot of our body heat, but it also gets a lot of moisture inside. But it's still lightweight and great for staying warm. And then we just have a Swagman roll by Helicon. This is just a basic wubby. The best thing about this is that we have a bunch of different configurations that we can use. We can actually wear this, and this is water resistant. And that means the water will actually hit it if it's raining and just roll right off. The Swagman roll is designed to go with the USGI poncho or the poncho from the same company. And it has toggles that fit into the grommets on this so we could wear this. And then the poncho over top is an entire sleep system and still configure it like it is in the Swagman roll for a variety of different setups with a hammock on the ground as a makeshift sleeping bag, whatever we need. So we could include that poncho. We give ourselves a tarp with this. However, that would mean we need to carry ground stakes, a ridge line, and then some bungee cords or other cordage to actually stake out this poncho and set it up as a tarp. Or we could even throw in a heavy duty Mylar space blanket like this grabber space blanket or a similar blanket just like this one comes in green as well as a bright orange from Self-Reliance Outfitters. You guys can check out my affiliate link if you so desire. But these blankets are great. They're added weight, but they still maintain or contain a lot of body heat. Plus we can use the orange one as a signal or we could turn the green one inside out with that Mylar to give us another signal. Just bear in mind, we have to carry this stuff with us to set up a quick shelter or craft it from the landscape. We should be carrying this stuff if we're going to have a shelter set up like this. But if we don't want to carry all this stuff, it's too easy to just go with a sleeping pad, something to sleep on, a bivy that's something to sleep under and technically in, as well as a swagman roll or a poncho liner or some sort of blanket, something to sleep in to keep us warm, to thermoregulate our body core temperature and prevent hypothermia and have a good night's sleep. So, all right, we talked water and shelter. Now let's talk fire. We can have just a basic small fire kit. Fire in a survival situation is incredibly important for a bug out situation. It may or may not be important because we have shelter to stay warm and we may be evading pursuers. We don't want to start a fire. So we can go with a small kit that will still get us that fire if we need to. A good thing to have is just matches. Everybody knows how to use matches pack a variety of matches. We have stormproof matches as well as strike anywhere matches as well as just regular matches. And we have cotton that can act as tinder inside, stopping all those matches from bouncing around. We have a striker on top of the safe itself plus an extra striker inside the match safe. And then on the back here is just a small ferro rod similar to this except extremely small that we can still use to get a fire going. Next, a lighter. That lighter should be our number one fire starting tool because it's instant flame. We can wrap it with 100 mile an hour tape. That lighter gives us the ability to start a fire very quickly, especially with great tinder sources and anything available that isn't soaking wet. And we can still hold this flame open if we so choose, or we can use the tape around it to actually act as a flame extender to get fire going as well. Next, just a simple ferro rod. With this ferro rod, we have a striker attached that we can use to actually get this struck, sending sparks onto our tinder to ignite and turn into flame. And then speaking of tinder, we should probably 
have tinder with us this is homemade tinder it's just the large circular cotton swabs that are 100 percent cotton that you find in the beauty section or the makeup section of your local store soak these in lighter fluid and then dip them in paraffin wax to contain that lighter fluid and prevent it from evaporating we can light this it goes up and lasts a long long time great tinder very cheap and easy to make we put this in a small tin and then we have a basic fire kit that is very small easy for us to transport that nearly anybody could use too easy all right so we talked about water shelter and fire now let's talk about food with food we should be going for things that are ready to eat we don't want to have to spend time either with stoves or particular setups to make a meal while we're doing our bug out situation we want things to eat on the go because we are trying to get off the x get away from whatever that threat is so mres trail mix granola bars beef jerky whatever we can eat on the run digest while we're moving is what we want we don't want to stop and cook anything however if we did have to stop and cook something there are a couple of setups we could use fairly easy this esbit stove comes with fuel cubes if this stand is where you put your cup and you can cook in that cup with water over the flames that come from the fuel cubes here there's not much fuel in this actual container or on this stove that we could use we could use firewood after the fuel is gone but it's a small stove and what we sacrifice in a small size means we're actually going to give up a lot of fuel a recommendation is that we have just a small cup and we can put a jet boil can in here along with just a small stove that attaches to that jet boil container with another lighter and this is our cooking pot as well as our stove that we could use to actually make a meal in a bug out situation but once again we want to go for things that are ready to eat on the fly so we don't have to stop and actually make anything a longer bug out situation we at least have stoves or options to cook other food if we happen to find food while we're out there bugging out all right so we got the big four taken care of that's fire water food and shelter now let's talk about land navigation land navigation is going to be important especially in bug out situations especially if you're in an area you've never been before but you have your kit and you're ready to go so there are a few things we should definitely prepare for ahead of time with our kit the first thing is getting a map of that area you're going to be working in or you're in traveling vacationing whatever it is get a map that is up to date of that area one thing we could do is simply laminate that map in the area that we're going to be vacationing in or staying in that way we have it ready to go we can actually write on this map if we had to we can put a message on the back like and subscribe and have just this little recon pad that we can use very small as opposed to having just a giant map next we should have a good protractor that is compatible with that map with the appropriate scale notepad and pencil or some sort of writing stick to take notes while we're doing our little bug out a gps is going to be great a gps will give us actual grid coordinates that we can confirm with the map to make sure we know where we're at and then use this together to plan our route to get back to safety or we could have a route built ahead of time coordinates in our gps pre-programmed and then move along that route using the map to check ourselves and then following our gps or vice versa to get off the x or get away from that threat a headlamp so we can land navigate in the dark and see what we're doing and then a compass in case our gps is broken or we run out of batteries we can use our compass and all the features in this to land navigate traditional orienteering and then we added pay speeds and then a whistle as an extra signaling device or emergency signaling device multifunctional but this along with spare batteries for both the gps as well as the flashlight are the things we should have as part of our land navigation kit for any bug out bag all right so we talked about land navigation let's talk about medical aid now with medical aid we need something to stop bleeding and prevent loss of life especially if that threat we're trying to bug out from is some sort of active shooter or some sort of threat that could cause serious bodily harm to us or to somebody else and so we have a basic blowout kit to stop bleeding and prevent exsanguination or death by blood loss we have combat shears to remove the clothing from the injury so we can identify that point of injury we have our cat tourniquet to stop bleeding immediately because the human can bleed out within one to two or three minutes we have an israeli pressure dressing 
and then combat gauze. Other things we should be carrying as part of our kit, especially if we have serious allergic reactions or need medication, we carry that appropriate amount of medication in our bug out bag, spare medication to last us one, two, or three days or even longer, pack as much as necessary. Now, the point of the EpiPen is that you carry medications and things that you need based off your medical needs. If you carry extra medication with you, if it's somebody in your group that needs that medication or can't administer it to themselves, like children or the elderly, and then we have the EpiPen to illustrate that if somebody has allergies, if we have this issued to us, if we're Wilderness First Aid certified, or if we are a medic or EMS, we can use this and treat somebody if they have that allergic reaction, or we can treat ourselves, or somebody could treat us if they see that we're having an allergic reaction to ourselves. But the point being is that have the medication, have everything you need to respond to any pre-existing conditions right there in your bug out bag. All right, so let's talk about our last of the seven priorities, and that is signaling. Signaling is going to be important in a bug out situation. We need to alert people that we are in trouble, especially emergency services, but also friendly people like the bug out location we're going to. We need to be able to contact those people at that location and alert them to our distress. So cell phone is going to be the primary. We have our cell phone. We should have a power cord to go with it, as well as some sort of solar charger or power bank or battery that we can use to recharge this and then continue to try to establish or maintain communication. In extreme circumstances, we have satellite phone that we can use if we're out in the wilderness or in a remote location, but we need to have a way to communicate. Cell phone being primary, we could use handheld radios if we have them or ham radios. We need to have a way to keep them charged as well and have spare batteries for those communications platforms that we're going to use to communicate over distance. But these are just the basic ones that we could use, cell phones, radios, to communicate. We could talk about planning communications or having a combo plan, but we're just going to keep it basic today with some of the things you should think about with that last priority of the seven signaling. All right, so we've talked about our seven priorities, fire, water, food, shelter, land navigation, medical aid, and signaling. Now we need to talk about a couple of the other things that need to go in our bug out bag. Those seven principles or priorities give us a foundation for any survival kit, especially a bug out bag. But there are other things that need to go into this bag and that are defense tools. We need defense tools to defeat a threat if we cannot escape it. Our primary means of defense is getting away from that threat. That's why it's a bug out bag. We need to get away from that threat. But we have several tools that we can carry as part of our defense, especially getting the proper training with these, similar to medical aid items. Get the proper training ahead of time and then make sure you have all the licenses and requirements and permits to carry these items and know your local laws. Carry a firearm with extra ammo to defeat a threat. Next we have a fixed blade knife. A fixed blade knife can defeat a threat as well with proper training and it can also be used as a survival tool in a survival situation if we bug out and then transition from an urban to a rural setting around to the wilderness. Remember, get away from the threat. That is our first step. That is our first step of defense and should be our primary every time. Bug out. But if we can't get away, we have to stand and defend ourselves. And this is how we do it. All right. Lastly, what I want to discuss with you is tools, just basic tools, utility tools to give us an edge when we have to transition from setting to setting. In this area, we could find ourselves transitioning from an urban setting to a rural or a wilderness setting very easily. And so we carry basic tools. These should be lightweight, multifunctional, and easy to use tools. So for this area, we have a small folding saw to take down material, either build a shelter or gather more fire material and process it. We have a multi-tool we can use with natural materials as well as man-made materials to manipulate those materials for whatever purpose we need them for. And then a small roll of duct tape can be used for bandages, can be used for fire starters, can be used for a wide variety of things to fix clothing. These are just tools that give us a lot of options and make work a lot easier, especially with this saw, and provide for our needs in an urban as well as rural setting. Really depend on your situation, but just understand the concepts of having tools to make our lives easier, especially if we have to transition from, again, an urban to a rural setting. All right, guys, well, I really hope you liked this video, a down and dirty video today. We had a camp out last night with Trail Life USA, so kind of running behind schedule here and wanted to get this video out, not only for you guys in the survival community, but for also my friends, family, 
close acquaintances or people I've had conversations with about bug out bags and everything that we should probably have in a bag or at least a way to begin to look at packing a bag and having those things ready to go for any emergency. So if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment in the comment section. I always appreciate your feedback. I want to thank you guys for making do for me, for this channel, for your likes, your views, your subscriptions, your comments, your feedback, and your shares. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.